<laughs> what do you think is going to happen? Do you think it's going to work? <laughs> eventually sell this one and get it you know that evidently has to come with it for sure Tyler White with Survival Dispatch. I'm here with Dave, owner of Pro Audio 4x4. And we are working on a project. We're gonna build, uh, I'm gonna call it like an, a mini overlander, <laughs> right? We're gonna rescue a trooper. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So basically, yeah, we're, we are gonna rescue a trooper. We've got, we've got two troopers, yep. right? Two different years, which is not the They're best close. thing. Close. Close, yeah, very close, but two. Close enough that one has electronics, the other one doesn't, just to confuse things. And we're basically gonna strip, I'm gonna call it the green one and the red one to make my brain capable, because there's also an engine for another one, and it's like right. 94, 95, 96. So we're gonna strip the four wheel parts off of the green one. We're gonna hopefully fix one of the three engines, put it all on the red one. Yeah. Uh, what else are we gonna do? What are we gonna do to the bottom of that thing? Are we gonna clean the frame up? Yeah. Rust treat it? coat it so it doesn't rust anymore change all the bushings make it like new grease everything every yeah. liquid's gonna get swapped out um, so I, I think the goal for now make it drive and stop right <laughs> right once we can get drive and stop maybe we'll take it I don't know Moab West Mountain something yep. simple we'll, just see yeah, how it works anywhere then we'll throw some bigger tires on it some rims yeah right get a winch yeah. And I'm gonna try to show you the difference. Like once we get the base thing built, which is just two troopers that are smashed together, we'll take it out and do something. We'll put tires on it, we'll go somewhere else. We'll put a winch on it, go try to use that winch somewhere else. And then eventually I'd like to add more complicated things. Not that a fridge is complicated, but it's not exactly necessary. Right. Right? It's, it's, I, I, it's I got nice coolers. to have. <laughs> it's nice to have. And in the same same manner, not that a, a a shower or water is is complicated. Again, it's not necessary. Yep. So we don't know what exactly we're gonna do for the shower yet. Yeah, we're just gonna wing it. it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's talk about the Super Trooper. It's like 103 out today. I'm sure right here in the direct sunlight, it's 105. So I've had this thing a couple days. Basically all that I've done is clean it and figure out what it's got on it. The owners of the vehicle didn't really know what it had. So I'm gonna show you, check this out. Rhino lined this stuff, cleaned some stuff out. I'm still putting the windshield wipers on. Um, most of the other stuff I've cleaned up, I'm finding little broken random things which are pretty obvious like I tightened up one of these guys and a, a really good note is just take the screw out, put a washer and put it back in because the only part of this stuff that gets damaged is the plastic so if you want a little hack to replace that just pop out the screw, put a washer on there, put that screw back in there and it'll suck it nice and tight. I actually had to do that on the other side. Um, this has given me some flashbacks to my childhood with these type of vehicles with these old doorknobs here and you want to confuse people tell them to roll the window up with one of those well that's a problem anyway that's nothing that a little epoxy won't fix more on that later so um the back is kind of cool in these things it'll fold down there's a little attachment right here. 
And I should be able to lie sideways in there and sleep, which is awesome. Or I can put my kids in here and sleep up on the roof. Just put a, um, a thing on there. So this guy had carpet back here, but they had axles and stuff. So it was grease soaked all the way through and it was just super nasty. And check that out, man. That's some original metal straight from the uh, 1990s, I guess. You can just paint it with rhino lining or herculiner or something and it just covers it with some kind of rubber so that, you know, you're, you're going to protect the metal and you're not going to tear stuff up. You're also not going to have to deal with the heat or scraping of the engine. Um, but if you do it, don't rhino lining these things, man. I learned the hard way. What goes on stays there permanently. That stuff doesn't come off. So if you do have a little hole like this, stick some tape in it or something, mask it off, whatever you got to do. Don't paint over something that you're going to need later. Um, as an example, that little hole goes to a little tie down latch. And uh, when we paint it, I will just put a piece of masking tape square over the whole hole. And that way later on, I can pull that masking tape off and it will actually work out. <laughs> so other than the obvious rack and uh, bumper up here, which is also going to need to be repainted thanks to the green we got going on. Other than those obvious things, there's a few dings and a little bit of beat up stuff. Like I gotta replace wipers and stuff that's obviously gonna happen. And I gotta wire this in. It's installed, the lights are installed, but they're not wired and I gotta figure out where that's going. There's a ton of randomness in here. I was looking in here and saw this. Air lockers. Yeah. That dude with the weed eater, I tell you what. So when I went to get this, they didn't know what they had. Like, I, I was asking them questions about it. They really didn't know what was going on. And I asked them about those guys right there. And the dude I bought it from did not know what an air locker was. Here's the other one, it's broken. I can get a little replacement part anyway. But the point is, I wasn't sure if these were being used as some sort of a switch to turn on the lights or something, or if they actually had them installed. And usually when they're installed, you've got some sort of air compressor up on in on the inside of the, they'll put it inside of the engine compartment sometimes, or they put it in different locations. And I didn't really dig into it because I, I was already, you know, interested in the vehicle because of the other stuff that we had. But I got looking underneath and there is an air locker in the back. And I got looking right here. There is the pump. I am pretty stoked about that. That's a, with, with insulation and parts, that's like a $2,000 upgrade. It looks like a, a single piston ARB airlock or air compressor. I'm going to have to find a way to add another hose to it so I can actually inflate and deflate my tires. But for now, that'll engage and dis, disengage air lockers. So I just got to trace it once we get this thing up and running to figure out. Uh, I've just got to trace it once we've got this thing up and running to figure out it is installed, is it functioning correctly? Um, like when I turn on the vehicle, one way to test that is this. It fires up pretty smoothly and you'll hear this thing turn on. It turns on, goes for a minute. You can hear it building up pressure and then it stops. That's what it should do. This front one turns on and stays on. So something's wrong with the front one. But the back one stays locked. There it turned off. And then you hear it release air. What that means is theoretically I've got a functioning rear air locker and I've got an installed front locker that's not functioning. I've got a couple options on this build. One thing you can do is buy two $500 vehicles and put them together. Maybe one of them's got a good engine and one of them's got a good tranny and one of them has a good body and one doesn't, whatever. You just kind of smash them together. I was thinking about doing that with this vehicle. Um, this has all of these great off-road parts, lift kit, rack, bumper, lockers, that kind of stuff. So I could easily take both axles off of this and the lift kit and the rack and the bumper, <clears throat> stick it on a newer vehicle that's in better condition. I think for now, I'm just gonna get this thing running and usable. And we'll just see where it leads. Like if I can find a dirt cheap, if I can find a secondary, a second vehicle 
that has a good body even if it's got like a blown engine and transmission and then take all the components from this and shift it over I think eventually I'm gonna put a Lexus V8 inside of it anyway so that's kind of where I'm at I think for now we just get this thing running we get it functioning maybe get some good tires on it get the lockers functioning get everything working and then see what you can find and the key with all of this is I have a, an objective of, of build something that I can use in the long term, but I don't know exactly how I'm gonna get there. And what I mean by that is I might have to spend time on Facebook Marketplace or on KSL or on Craigslist or whatever you've got locally, kind of picking and, and, and getting parts. And then I'm gonna end up with some extra stuff that I can turn around and sell, maybe even end up with an, a second running vehicle out of the parts from the first. So that that's the whole attraction to me is to be able to take a bunch of these little components and smash them together and make something usable for way less and uh, kind of go from there. All right, so. So I picked up the second trooper. This is just a $500 body. You can see it back there. It's on a dolly back there. Um, this trooper has a good transmission. It has a leaking engine. Um, Four-wheel drive works. It's got a sunroof, but it's glued together. Um, electric windows, couple different parts. So for the most part, I just want this trooper for the body. And I'm gonna take all the great four-wheel drive parts off of the other one and put it on this one and then take the leftover axles and stuff off of this one and put on the other one. Maybe I can sell that other one and break even financially. And then this one will be the body for the final build. So I'm stoked about that. And it was 500 bucks, I had to drive for a while to get it. So we're not in this too deep yet and we will see what is to come. Okay, let's look at this thing. A little bit windy out here, but this is the first vehicle, the Trooper. We got this guy right here. He's got lift kits, bumper, lights, rack, lockers. I don't know if you can see that. Lockers. Extra parts. We're basically going to take this guy, strip it down, and put it on the red one. Right here is the red one. This is gonna be the body. I've got an extra light, but it doesn't matter because we're gonna put LEDs in there anyway. Put that bumper on there. Paint this with some sort of bed liner, like rhino lining or something. Rack lights, lift kit. Probably remove the entire axle off of both of them and replace them because the other axles have uh, manual hubs and lockers and all that fun stuff. She's a little beat up. Let's see if I can open this up here. She's a little beat up, but it's gonna make for an awesome project car. Okay, the next step is to pull them both apart, swap their parts, and start putting them back together. Let's get to it. One good thing you're going to need when you're tearing into something that's been sitting for a decade some nice penetrating oil. See if we can uh, get all that dealt with. Salt, yep. nastiness. Woo, woo, woo. Yeah. 
put it over here, I guess. Okay, so we got the bumper off. We're just gonna strip this and we're gonna paint it and throw it back on. That is heavier than it looks. Okay, so where are we at on this thing? I've been working on this project for weeks. Now, not every day, just in my spare time. And uh, we got the whole top torn apart. This is just sitting there. I got into here and found out that, oh, my heater core is broken, yay. Got to order one of those parts. It took like a week to get it in. So now all my wires are, or all my hoses are sitting here. I, uh, you got the original hose which you can't find anywhere. So I just went into the back of AutoZone and said, hey, these two look alike-ish, close enough. The problem is if you get one straight and then you bend it, it, it will kink itself off. But if you get one that's bent to almost as close, so I just grabbed two hoses that were close to the original thing and hopefully won't jack it up. Otherwise, I'll be back in there doing it again. So that is my mess. And that is what we've got going on. So right now we are trying to get into there and get the heater core get it replaced once that's done I can actually start building the top of the engine again another thing that's fun is this is a 94 and that's a 96 so theoretically we should be able to swap some parts out but there's no real guarantees on a lot of that so I've got I've got lockers and a lift kit on this the lift kit will go over there but will the axle switch over there because if they won't I'm gonna start building on this one and tearing parts off of that one that should be fun so, you know, there's some stuff that you run into when you're building these is ideally you get the two the same years, but I got this thing for 500 bucks and it's got a great body. So I figured I'd just roll with it and see if we can make it work. Not the smartest way to do it, but pretty typical of what can happen with these little garage projects. All right, I gotta get back to work. <laughs> this whole vehicle for 500 bucks which is dirt cheap because I had an oil leak and we figured it was probably the head gasket but I got down to the valve covers and found a big split in the bottom of the valve cover so I think the oil leak is the valve cover gasket so I have pressure washed everything and cleaned it and made it all shiny and happy got new gaskets and we're getting ready to put it back together cleaned all that out cleaned out all the intake and everything so, now we reassemble this whole beast. It's taken about a day because I'm not a mechanic and uh, hope that I did it right. <laughs> what do you think is going to happen? Do you think it's going to work? <laughs> so there's, we're, we're going to throw some smoke because I put a bunch of sea foam in it, so expect white smoke. That's on purpose. Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> nice. I stripped another vehicle. I've got extra CV joints and bumpers and dash and some random stuff. Yeah. So hopefully of the two and a half, we can make one good functioning one. Yep. Right? We'll probably swap entire axles. Yeah, we'll um, swap the axles. And I, the other thing on a note here too, I wanted this to be something that you can do in your garage. The original project, I was just going to do this in my garage. Yeah. I, yeah. I talked David into helping me out though, yeah. because now you have a professional that you can watch and he'll show you the right way to do it. It also speeds up my process so I'm not experimenting and failing. That way you have a better guide of this is how to do it if you want to do it in your garage. And then if you don't want to do it in your garage, you can just come to Pro Audio 4 before here in Provo and have him do it for you. Yep. So there, there's options with a lot of that stuff. That'd be very informative. Cool. Okay. So we'll do a build, we'll take it out for a drive. Um, we'll show you some step-by-step, -step, a little bit of the spin-off videos and just see where this goes. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Just partial plan. <laughs> cool. Let's cool, do cool. it. Yeah. Well, let's make it happen. Let's build a trooper.